DC Comics. Al Ghul has the most impractical living space of all time. Unless there's some sort of hidden road on the backside, there isn't even a way to get up here. I don't even see a place to land my helicopter. I should never have allied myself with a madman. Raish Al Ghul instigates dropping a full glass of wine after hearing something shocking cliche prior to being told by his assistant that the Joker has kidnapped Robin. Also, not sure what Al Ghul's plan is here, but it's the f***ing Joker. Of course he's gonna kidnap and torture Robin, or whomever he can get his hands on. If he wanted a less mad and zanier partner, he should have gone for the Condiment King or Kite Man. <laughs> Nitrous. Did Batman really go to the Fast and Furious school of accelerating things? What hurts more, A or B? I'm not completely clear on the exact powers of Boy Wonder Bread here, but is invincibility one of them? Cause dude just took a crowbar to the face repeatedly and is somehow still breathing. For all the blood that's on the floor, there is surprisingly none on Robin's face. Please tell the big man I said hello. Other than movie's got a red hood, it makes zero sense that the Joker would leave Robin alive and give him a chance to escape before the bomb goes off. <laughs> Not the best Joker laugh I've ever heard. Sounds like he's coming off a three-day bender. How did the mask tear in that spot without doing any damage to the surrounding face? In fact, the opposite eye seems to be the only thing that was affected by all the crowbar shenanigans. Man, even after an explosion, Robin still has flawless skin. He should have forgotten that whole superhero gig and made millions off his skincare secrets. I enjoy stylized, rainy Gotham scenes as much as the next guy, but did you really need to take two full minutes of a 75-minute movie to do titles only? No wonder Gotham has such a crime problem. The police department is wasting all of its money on dirigibles. I thought it was Chichi. Wasn't my meat. Batman has an insane number of rogues at this point, and just about every name in the book has been used. But we couldn't do better than Chi-Chi, not to mention there was already a fairly important female character from the animated series named Chi-Chi, so why not piss off all the Batmaniacs while you're at it, movie? Well, we all know that's a lie. Whoa, when did Deadpool get here? You wanna die? There's easier ways to kill yourself! Drug peddling scumbag number seven would be onto something here, except for some unexplained reason none of these armed, hardened criminals actually fired back when fired upon. I will be running the drug trade from now on. You go about your business as usual, but kick up 40% to me. This works. Those are the heads of all your lieutenants. That took me two hours. <laughs> and it was made into a movie with Joe Pesci and the first Buffy the Vampire Slayer. 40% works for me. But how do they get it to him? Red Hood has the negotiation portion down pat, but needs to work a little harder on the logistics side of his LLC. I think I lost him. You think I lost him? I think you lost him. No, you didn't. But if you keep repeating every line of dialogue three times, you've definitely lost me. Okay, I'm willing to buy that maybe the back door will come open, but how do you not have the only thing in your escape truck secured in any way? At least splurge a few bucks on some bungees. Batman is addicted to phalanges. I guess this superhuman android thing was scheduled to hatch out of this metal box right now? Nobody punched a code into this thing. Why hire a crew to steal it if the contents were going to escape before they got halfway back? It's called Amazo. I know it's from the comics, but Amazo? What's next? Awesomeo? Neato? Coolio? Oh, wait. What the hell is an Amazo? A highly advanced cybernetic android equipped with the ability to absorb the power of superhumans. Batsplaining. Also, that is a very specific description. Pretty sure Batman gets all his info off his wiki fandom page just like we do. Packs quite the punch for a toaster on steroids, huh? In 12 minutes, we've had Ra's al Ghul, Joker, Jason Todd Robin, Red Hood, Amazo, and Nightwing all pop up with little to no explanation. Not sure why anyone was surprised how DC backed their asses into the Justice League movie. They've been pulling this shit for years. That's Nightwing. He was the Bat's first sidekick. The first Robin. I see that this Robin crew employs a DC nerd on their staff who knows all things Robin. I think you'll have to do better than that, boss. I did. Why didn't Batman just lead with this? Why does this seem to be a common theme in comic book movies? I have this thing that can end the battle quickly, but nah, I'll just punch the guy a bunch first and see if that works. He has the same weak points as a human being! So, Oreos and pornography then? Lasers! He's got lasers! Nightwing is the equivalent of the annoying theater patron who describes loudly and in excruciating detail everything that happens on the screen. I don't think putty in his eyes is gonna hurt him. Jesus Christ, Nightwing. Don't you know your friendly neighborhood Batman by now? This isn't just putty. The f*** is wrong with you? It's like you've never worked with Batman before. We don't have any choice! He's got it. Did Red Hood purposely wait to shoot his crew so they could almost tell Batman everything? The shots came from the rooftop. A sniper. You think? Honestly, is one of Nightwing's superhero aliases Captain Obvious? I'm sure all of these indistinguishable windows on this display are giving important information, but how in the world is anyone reading any of this text? A couple making out on rooftop gives Batman bad ideas later in the Killing Joke movie. Batman somehow jumps through the roof in the one spot he won't land in a vat of acid. Also, do all villains have these acid vat warehouses spread throughout the city? They never actually use the acid for anything? So why the f*** is it there? Hard to forget that night, huh? It's harder to believe that Red Hood witnessed what Batman was flashing back to in his mind. Assuming Red Hood was shooting the car to cause an explosion that would kill Batman, then why didn't Red Hood just shoot Batman? This is probably what, the 15th or 16th building to explode in Gotham in the past month? Insurance premiums must be insane. 
State Farm and Gotham's construction companies are taking everyone's money. Red Hood has done it all, including just basic trafficking. What was he trafficking? Does it matter? We cut that asshole Red Hooded. Crime is down. Indeed it is. Master Bruce got almost three hours sleep in the last two days. True busman's holiday. The percentage of the audience watching this that know what this means corresponds directly to the percentage of things Kanye West says that aren't bad crazy. Also, Alfred's technically wrong here. A busman's holiday is meant to refer to people who keep working when on vacation, while Batman is literally doing his job. <laughs> Wait, Batman and Nightwing can just walk out that door themselves with no guards in sight? Seems like pretty slim security when you have Gotham's number one mastermind on the other side of that door. This here is the Black Mask. The first boss to gain control of the entire city in 20 years. Dear Bat God and Bat Heaven, is this whole movie just blatant exposition? Here's five sins so I don't have to keep bringing it up every time a random character over explains who someone is or why it's important. Why does Batman have to make everything with his personal stamp on it? Wouldn't it be easier to just buy a 20 pack of small mics on Amazon? Is he trademarking this and making money off of it? Also, Batman has successfully bugged Black Mask's office. And while this is great and all, why doesn't Batman just take him down? If he knows where the biggest criminal in the entire city does business, why can't he just end it? Is he scared of due process? What are they waiting around for? Seriously? Waiting around? The dude literally started walking over the moment you landed. These random helicopter pilots are more impatient than DC trying to develop a cinematic universe. So, since none of these characters have actual superpowers, and that fall would kill everyone involved, I can only assume that these three are zombies for the rest of their runtime. I'm wondering something. If Red Hood doesn't want to kill Batman so that he can teach him a lesson later, how come he keeps doing things that could possibly kill Batman? And if he wants to kill Batman, he had a perfectly good sniper shot to do that earlier when he killed those poor bastards who were about to tell Batman about him. Random inconvenient blimp is random inconvenient. We got him! Nightwing, you're such an asshole. That's impressive. Nothing we haven't seen before. Exactly. So why does Nightwing have a Red Hood boner going on right now when he and Batman do this exact same sh nightly? Where exactly is this footage coming from? Even if it was in Batman's hood and he was behind Red Hood at this point, it wouldn't be this steady because Batman would be running as well. As much as I hate to belabor a point. And still, that is often exactly what you do. Alpha would be exemplary at cinema sense. I'm chatty as part of my charm. So we're just blatantly ripping off Spider-Man at this point? Like right there. That. He sliced that cable off his ankle before it went taut. You don't just do that. That has to be practiced, learned. You know, at cable slicing before it goes taut school. They have an online course, but to get the real benefits, you need to train in Hong Kong under Dr. Wu Ping for two years. You know many knives that can cut my lines? Not many. No. Not many. Are we repeating a sin for repeatedly repeating lines? Yes, we are repeating a sin for repeatedly repeating lines. Even when Robin was... What age is this? Ten, I guess? Whatever. He already trained super hard on that cable slicing before it goes top program. This kind of thing happens more than you think, apparently. Oh, come on. Who shoots at the top of a doorway? This stupid-ass move by Robin is stupid-ass, and the problem is he survives it, encouraging him to do it again. And that's results-oriented thinking that should end in his death sooner or later. 20 rounds a second and you were still too slow. I'm not slow, punk! First off, being slow wasn't the machine gun guy's problem. It was his aim. Second off, if you tell someone that you're about to kill, I'm not too slow, then you are officially too slow. Also... I had to take him down. You shattered his collarbone! Wait, is Batman really trying to give lessons on not hurting criminals? Hypocrisy, thy name is Bruce. Where did this cape come from? Cause when we started this trip down memory lane, there were, as Edna Mode would say, Knock it! Molotov cockfail. I swear these aren't lightsaber ripoffs. We call them, um, glowy blades. Discount Cyclops somehow waits this long in the fight to do the only thing he was brought here to do. Deus Bat Machina. I gotta say. I missed watching you work. So, we're just not even trying to hide identities at this point? Why even keep the red hood on? Other than Batman, no one else would know who Jason Todd is. Black Mask just wants a body. We don't need your head. Actually, didn't Black Mask imply he did want- HIS HEAD MOUNTED ON MY WALL! Nail me and you'll electrocute mm. both of us. Sure, we've been given the bat crumbs to know that this is Robin, but why would anyone else think Batman cares about hurting the red hood? Son of a- Are you telling me that scumbag stole my guns? AGAIN?! Black Mask seems to have no other purpose than to Yosemite Sam it up as much as possible. We're stuck in the damn crossfire! Why does Red Hood A. need a bazooka to kill Black Mask, B. need a red dot to aim this thing, C. wave to Black Mask and give him a head start, and D. wait an additional 13 seconds before firing? Also, what kind of black magic is he using to see this laser target? Have you ever tried to look at your neck? Go ahead, give it a whirl. Exactly. You didn't have to kill him. One, yes I did. Two, we're paying you a ton. Three, we need some more Joker in the movie, so we're pretending breaking him out is as simple as paying off a couple guards. Also, there are so many escape attempts at Arkham Asylum, it's a wonder Batman doesn't have this place constantly surveilled. Grave Robin. These are supposed to be potato chips, right? This chip looks more like an onion ring here. 
as we clearly see the Joker's finger and prison garb through it. May I have some water? You mean milk? Cause that's definitely milk. I was in the midst of toppling the economy of Europe, but you were on to me. This is the beginning of an entire five minutes of narrated flashback. I mean, there's exposition, and then there's being tricked into thinking you're watching an animated film when you're actually just listening to a book on tape. Batman, who we've been told time after time in these movies is one step ahead of everybody, is amazing and knows all, is somehow surprised by a two-bit Joker henchman and is dropped by one punch so that this death in the family can happen. As you know, I achieved this by bathing in the rejuvenating waters of the Lazarus Pit. As you know, any time a character says, as you know, I yell at the screen, then why are you telling them? I'm fun at parties. Also, the Lazarus Pit is essentially DC's ultimate death machina. Therefore, there are rarely any stakes, because you can just go to Ra's al Ghul's place and get your life back. It has long been rumored that it is capable of an even greater feat, to raise the dead. It's called the Lazarus Pit. I'm guessing that's for a reason. He burns the very kingdom you... protect. This story was so long, even Batman checked out. His life and his death are my greatest failure. Do you remember how he was when I found him? Haven't we already gone over this a few times? There are way too many minutes wasted on moody morning Batman in this movie. Glad to see Gotham employing a multi-Zeppelin attack during this Joker diversion. How did nobody know until now that the city's most dangerous criminal had escaped Arkham Asylum? I mean, they should have some sort of tracker on this guy at this point, don't you think? You know, I used to wear an outfit a lot like that. Mine was more flashy Mater D than motorcycle fetish. Why is he repeating the same thing he said earlier here? More flashy Mater D than motorcycle fetish. It was barely funny the first time. Is repeating it supposed to be clever? But what, what I, really I really wanted, wanted was, was an, an audience, audience with you. I'm sorry, that seems to imply that you organized this little clam bake. It most definitely does, which makes zero sense. Even if Red Hood's eventual plan was to get the Joker broken out so he could kill him, how did he know Black Mask would eventually be the one to break him out? Here's to warm memories. Lighter finally lighting after trying several times while the killer says something crazy and metaphorical cliche. I get that it landed on a person instead of the actual gasoline, but as drenched as that area was, that entire truck would have gone up in flames instantly either way. Seriously? The bat plane has fire retardant? This plane is so thin. How does he have room for this sh Also, let's say Batman had Richard Dreyfus ghost guiding him and he was actually good enough to make that shot. There's still no way enough of that stuff is getting in there to put out that fire. In fact, because it's in motion, most of what got in there would end up on the back wall anyway. Batman has f***ing foam that will shoot out of his jet if he randomly comes across a fire, but he doesn't have a way to prevent the Batmobile from being vandalized. Will Batman stop trying to tie Red Hood's legs already? Isn't there another way to take him down that doesn't involve lassoing him? Which he's shown to be able to escape time and again. Did that knife just go through concrete? What the hell? Jason. So he wore a mask under a mask? That doesn't seem practical. Also, was this supposed to be a reveal? Because Batman has figured out on at least three different occasions in this movie that the Little Red Robin Hood was Jason Todd. Why would he have his hood set with explosives? Especially considering he had the trigger on him at all times. What bothers you more? That your greatest failure has returned from the grave? Or that I've become a better Batman than you? Rumor has it, Christian Bale had the same conversation with George Clooney. Jesus Christ, man, so many characters have crashed through windows in this movie that it deserves a bonus round. But we just got done with a window bonus round, and I'm worried about repeating myself. Also, scene does not contain a lap dance. We know that they both got in here through the window, but where exactly is the door to this bathroom? Is the window the only entry? I guess when you gotta go, you gotta go. All I've ever wanted to do is kill him. But if I do that, if I allow myself to go down into that place, I'll never come back. Yeah, sure, whatever. I think it's more about DC killing Batman's best villain than it is your deep, dark place that you can never come back from. Why? I'm not talking about killing Penguin or Scarecrow or Dent. They've killed a lot of people as well, but, you know, semantics. If you won't kill this psychotic piece of filth, I will! Jason actually thinks that Batman has no other option than to kill him to stop him from killing Joker. Batman's suit is filled with so many deterrents, and Jason knows this, that it's silly he thinks this will go down the way he planned it. Why have a countdown and not just have them explode immediately? Why does everyone give these f***ing guys so many opportunities to escape? <laughs> the fact that Joker is still alive after being right next to the explosives and also pinned down perfectly by pieces of the building it leveled is so much convenience that 7-Eleven wants to stock it on the shelves. I'm Nightwing, remember me? It looked like I was going to be a part of this movie there for a second at the beginning, and then I sprained an ankle and wasn't anymore. Good times. This doesn't change anything. It doesn't change anything at all. Well, good thing we spent an entire movie on it then. Let me tell you what Melvin's Post is packing right here. I've got 411 Posi Track out back, 750 Double Pumper, Edelbrock Intake, scored over 30, 11 to 1 pop up pistons, turbo jet, 390 horsepower. We're talking some fucking muscle. Hey man, I know you got this thing out of a comic book.
I want this man dead. I want him dead. I want his family dead. I want his house burnt to the ground. I want to go to the middle of the night. I want to piss on his ass. Do you know who? Who you're messing with? You don't have any idea who you're stealing from? You and your friends are dead. We're sending your boss a message. A message in a bottle. Yeah. Oh, fuck, where the son of a truck lord? None of the above. Fucking cut the cord. Mr. Anderson, welcome back. We missed you. This ends tonight. I love it. You managed to find a way to win. Well, ha, cha, 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 cha. The shots came from the rooftop. A sniper. Holy known unknown flying objects. I told you not to put metal in the science of them. What do you do that for? Different than dick in so many ways. Yes, it's true. This man has no dick.